Hello and welcome to training on the Greenwise Energy Solutions iPad application for audits, iWise. Um, we will go through the application and just kind of give a general overview on how to use it, uh, do a sample audit um, so you can see um, how to enter information into everything and uh, produce a proposal for your customer. Um, the application is available on the Apple App Store. Uh, you can just search um, iWise or GreenWise. And uh, it should be, if it's not the first one, it should be uh, right near the top there. Um, I will also leave a, uh, a link for the um, application in the uh, description below. So first thing uh, you do um, after you download the application, um, go ahead and open it up. And you will enter in the login information. If you do not have an, uh, an account with us at the moment, um, you'll see there's a, a need an account or forgot your password links at the bottom. And from there you can uh, either set up an account or reset your password. Um, so go ahead and enter in the login information and get into the application itself. And um, yours will probably just have the the sample store audit in there. Um, that's just an example. Uh, so as you do audits, you'll see that this uh, side column will fill up in alph alphabetical order. Um, so for this purposes of this video, we'll hit the plus button there. Do a new audit. Um, so the store name, um, obviously just uh, whatever the store is you'll be doing, I'm just going to call it uh, IYs um, and store number. Some store chains have their stores listed, you know, by number as well. Um, so if you have that info, you can put that in. Otherwise, uh, you know, just like one because um, it is a required field which helps distinguish this particular audit from any other audit that may be in the database. Um, the audit name, again, I'll just go IYs. We'll just call it IYs1. Keep it simple. Um, hit create audit. So when that happens, this screen will come up um, and you're on the customer overview page. Um, you'll see that that info you just put in is in the uh, upper right there. Um, and from here you can just uh, start with the customer name. And why it fully capitalizes John and Doe. Um, and type in a number and you'll see like before anything with an asterisk is a required field um, again just to help distinguish it within the database and hit return go to the next tab or um, field put in the fax number and hit return their email address um, physical address Oops. and within this field if you hit return it will actually just go down to the next line because you know you may have to put like a suite number or you know PO box or something like that in there so um, you actually just tap outside of the field and or hit the I'm sorry hit hit the uh, keyboard you know close key then go into the city and um, just type in city name and return and then for the state um, there's this roller um, that will have the um, choices you can choose um, so it's got the 50 U.S. states, um, but if you happen to not be in the U.S., at the very bottom, there's options for Canada, uh, Caribbean, Colombia, Mexico, and outside U.S. Um, so if you, you know, need to choose one of those options, um, those are available. So for the sake of the training here, we'll just choose Minnesota, um, call it 55443, and hit return, and again, it goes up to the info we already put in, but it is editable if you want to change it you know now that you're into here 
um, you're not stuck with what you entered previously. Um, for the price level, um, it's either MSRP price or the discounted price, and uh, we can go through that once we get to the price list page. Um, so for now, I'll just choose discount. Um, and rebate provider, this is obviously the rebate provider for wherever this customer is located, you know, who that provider is. Um, in Minnesota, a popular one around here is XL Energy. Um, like Wisconsin has focus on energy. So that's just information you'll have to find out either from local utility um, company or if you already know who the rebate provider is, then you're all set. Um, so I will just put in uh, XL. Oops. X cell energy and hit return. Uh, your blended kilowatt rate or blended kilowatt hour rate. Um, this is simply not just finding the kilowatt rate, kilowatt hour rate on their electric bill. It is actually, and you can hit that question mark, it's calculated by taking the total electric bill charge divided by the kilowatt hour usage for that billing period. So what in essence it is doing is encompassing the entire electric bill. So it includes, you know, any other fees or charges or what have you that may be on the electric bill. So it's not just the energy. Um, so it provides a much more accurate um, savings calculation in the end. Um, common rate around here, eight and a half cents. Um, sales tax rate, we'll just do like a 7.5%. Um, shipping fees for all equipment, um, pretty self-explanatory. Whatever you're going to charge the customer for shipping everything, maybe zero if you're just bringing it all to the job site, or 115 bucks to ship it if they're having somebody else do um, the install. And that's the last field. So we're at the end there. Um, we go over to the operations, uh, literally just the store hours, which come into play for LED lights and night covers because you're not using them 24 hours a day. It's only when they are actually in operation. So let's just say it's, you know, 7 a.m. to 11, and Monday through Friday is all the same. So you can hit, co whoop, hit copy for Monday through Friday. And say Saturday, they're open from 9 to midnight. Um, and let's say on Sunday, they're closed. So there you can see in the hours open and hours closed columns, um, calculates all those you know times open and closed for you. So open 95 hours, close 73. Um, we go over to rebates and info. The fan control rebates, um, those are generally either calculated either per motor or per controller. Um, and that's something you would have to find out from the rebate provider um, and via, you know, like the rebate application itself should have that information for you. Um, and speaking of rebate applications, there are two applications that you would probably run into. One is called a prescriptive, and the other is a custom. The custom one um, is basically is for anything that isn't prescriptive. So say you go into a store and you're going to put in anti-sweat heater controls, and anti-sweat heater controls are not listed on the prescriptive rebate application. That is something you would have to gather information necessary to provide to the rebate provider and in turn they will then calculate out what the rebate will be and then you will put in you know kind of do some reverse math to figure out you know how much the rebate per freezer door or cooler door or whatever it may be put that amount in there so that it all calculates out properly um, if you have any questions about that uh, just feel free to give us a call and uh, we'll help you through that um, for prescriptive rebates, 
um, you'll see right on the rebate application, like for example, the anti-sweat heater controls, it'll say $40 a door. Whereas custom, it has none of that information on there. You just, you have to send it in. So prescriptive tells you what it is. A lot easier to do it when it's all prescriptive, um, which most rebate companies now and the providers, they've been doing it long enough now where most stuff is prescriptive. Um, so fan controls, they can be either per controller or per motor. Again, it'll say it on the rebate application. And same with the LEDs, per foot or per door. Um, and then the lights shut off at night. This is for the refrigerated case lights, you know, or freezer door lights. Um, a lot of stores shut those off at night because they don't need them on to show product because there's nobody in the store. Um, unless they're a 24-hour store, of course. So um, a lot of times this will be, you know, lights are shut off at night, yes. So when we come down, um, the prices in here, all these yellow fields are fields that are not editable um, from this page. Some will change based on, like these prices will change based on what you enter in on the price list tab, which we will go over to shortly. Um, but so like all the uh, non-yellow fields, um, you enter in, you know, rebates per freezer door, let's say 40. Um, cooler doors, they're generally both the same for freezer and cooler doors. And then installation per anti-sweat controller, um, we'll say 50 and hit next. Um, then we jump down, that jumped way down to the LED stuff. And this hasn't filled in yet because um, there are different options for LEDs. So once you start putting in LED audit information, this should populate. Um, the occupancy sensors and power packs and that kind of stuff down here. Um, generally don't see a whole lot of that product being um, installed just because um, it is somewhat expensive and the payback for those options is not very high. So uh, a lot of customers just opt not to do that part. Um, so go down and say install per LED bar let's just say 25 bucks um, and rebate per linear foot um, what well, we have what did we put up here we did LED rebates calculated per door so per door we'll just say it's uh, fifteen dollars per door um, so then we jumped over to ECM info so install per display motor we'll say whoop, 30 and install per walk-in motor, say 35. Rebate per display motor, 20. Rebate for walk-in motor. Um, now you'll see that walk-in motors have less than 120th horsepower or greater than or equal to 120th horsepower. There have been a few rebate um, applications we've come across that do distinguish um, rebate amount based on um, that horsepower. Uh, more often than not, you will not run into that. Um, but in case you do, just know that there may be different rebate amounts for those different size motors or different horsepower motors. Um, if it is not broken out, you just put the same number in for both of these fields. So we'll just say 30 um, for a uh, less than 1 20th and 30 for greater than or equal to. Um, then we jump down to install per fan controller, we'll say 75 there. And rebate for fan controller, again, we go up to here, we buy the rebate application, it's per motor. So per motor, we'll say 10 bucks a motor. Um, miscellaneous EC motor charges. Um, if you're doing motors, there's probably pretty good chance you're swapping out old one-speed motors for the new EC motors that are two-speed. Um, and in the case of the orange motor, uh, can be a variable-speed motor. Um, 
So you may have extra wiring to connect the signal leg of the motors together or, you know, wire nuts or, you know, all that just other stuff that, you know, is involved with um, putting in new motors. Um, so this is just a field for you to just kind of put that all-encompassing charge in there. So um, just say it's like a hundred bucks for all the extra stuff. Um, the four duty cycle fields you see here. The only time you will change those numbers is when you are installing the equipment in a year-round high humidity area such as Hawaii or um, southern Florida um, places like that um, otherwise you do not need to worry about changing these numbers um, you know like if it's a area that gets high humidity but it's only seasonal don't worry about it um, and if you are in a situation where it's a year-round high humidity area uh, please contact us and we will help you determine the best percentages to use in these um, these fields so we will just go ahead and skip past those um, night covers um, doesn't matter which length of night cover you know width of night covers we sell the you know the four and six footers um, doesn't matter which one you are putting up you just it's just easiest to do install per foot so um, you know say it's you know five bucks a foot to put them in um, and then the rebate per linear foot that would again be on the application um, generally somewhere between two and a half bucks to five um, five dollars rebate per foot and we're done so that information is in there now this summary page we will come back to this populates um, as you enter information into the audits um, obviously we did the hundred bucks for the miscellaneous EC motor charges so that's in there and that shipping cost that we had previously entered the price list automatically populates with the most current um, MSR pre price list that we upload to the database um, so that's what the standard price list or you know column is um, so the discounted price is however you want to choose the, the discounted rate so you can change let's say you're gonna do some anti sweat heater controls and you want to discount them a little bit more for the customer so you're gonna do a 25 percent discount so you can change each one separately or the standard discount button down at the bottom will change all of those for you um, so we'll just change this back to 15 so that's where when we were at the um, customer overview that's this price level distinction there so um, you know just choose discount and you can change the uh, the price list to um, whatever you desire um, you could certainly go in and change the standard price prices in there if you wanted to do that um, sometimes easier to just use the discounted rate um, so um, from there we start doing the audits when we'll start with the anti sweat heater controls the first one here is the audit with the doors and frames um, frame and mullion heaters separate so inside the case there's separate you know wiring controlling those two sets of heaters um, more often this is you know for like freezer doors where like you know the pizza and frozen vegetables and that kind of stuff is so you hit new run uh, for description kind of do what I was just talking about there just to you know frozen doors or whatever it may be um, case manufacturer whatever that happens to be um, uh, door heater amps per case um, this can be found on the manufacturers tag um, or you can also you know open up the case and uh, with a multimeter take an amp reading figure out what that that number is um, if either of those two options are not available um, a general rule of thumb is uh, coolers it is uh, three quarters of an amp per door and for freezers it is uh, one and a half amps so basically double um, so in this instance um, let's just say 
we're working on some two-door cases, and we've got five of them. Um, so anyway, so a, a two-door freezer case, um, amp and a half each door, so each one will be three amps. So the three times two. Um, so then we come here, number of doors per case, two, and in this run of freezer doors, there's five sets of these doors. So that's what the number of identical doors is. So you may have, you know, three four-door cases and two five-door cases or something like that. So each one of those will have its own separate run that you would input this information in so you, you know, properly have the um, heater amps per case and um, that information. So and we'll choose freezer here um, and tap out, hit save, and now that's in there for you. Um, each individual run will then have, you know, the number identical sets of doors, and that correlates to the number of controllers you will have for that particular run. So that other example I just said, you know, if you had, you know, some four-door cases and some five-door cases, um, each one of those would have its own, you know, number identical sets of doors, which would then, you know, help calculate out the number of controllers needed. Um, and all of the information you put into this particular audit section um, will produce uh, or will use an LT controller, which stands for low temp, um, also referred to as our two channel controller. Um, and the two channels is what allows you to separate out the door heaters from the frame and mullion heaters. Um, go over to the next tab and um, say like the they got a walk-in cooler, like a beverage cooler, pop cooler, beer cooler, that uh, um, has you know some doors on the front of it. So let's say we're working on uh, it's a walk-in cooler with uh, 16 doors on it, two sections of eight doors. Um, let's call it beverage case manufacturer again, if you know it. Perfect. If not, it's not absolutely necessary. Um, now the door heater amps per anti-sweat heater control. Um, this is important um, because if, if you go above 12 amps, you uh, must use an, an uh, additional controller or a rib relay or you know another type of relay uh, to control amps above 12 amps. Um, so on this. 16 um, door cooler, uh, let's just say first it goes above 12 amps um, and there's eight doors controlled by one J box and another eight doors controlled by another J box which you would see within the walk-in cooler itself. Um, so you're either going to have to put in two controllers or a relay. Um, so Eight doors is controlled by one J box, so half an amp um, per door. So uh, we got four amps there, and number of doors per anti sweat heater control is eight, and it's two sets, so we've got two sets of doors there. Or I'm, yeah. And I'm sorry, it's three quarters of an amp, not half an amp, three quarters of an amp. Um, so that would actually be six amps per door. So go to cooler. Um, and here, if you wanted to, you can choose an LT or MT. Um, you know, if it's a freezer, you might want to separate them out. Um, coolers, you can use the MT, which is uh, for medium temp, um, or our single channel controller. Um, again, at your discretion, which controller you want to use there. Um, so we'll just choose MT. Um, so the Ganger individual, that's like if you're going to end up, you know, instead of doing two controllers, you do a relay. You would call it Ganged, and then the relay um, section is highlighted for you to choose 
Um, most common one to use is the rib relay, the ice cube one, uh, not as popular, a little bit harder to install. Um, so generally the rib one. Um, for this instance, though, we'll just choose uh, individual, and you'll see that the relay part is grayed out, so you can't even um, choose something there. And we'll hit save, and that information is now in there. Um, and you can scroll through and see the info. And if you need to go in and change something in this one or any other audit area, you just tap on that particular run, and you can go in and edit it. Um, so after all that info is put in, here's your proposal page, and shows you saving or you know energy before, after, the savings, um, you know, kind of the cost for that particular part of the project, and uh, your payback. The last tab is your bill of materials. Um, so when we go over to LEDs, and here, um, basically the you know the same frozen doors that we just did um, is where all the you know the refrigerated case lights are going to be, um, and then obviously in that walk-in cooler you can do those as well. Um, so for wattage, uh, you know generally those old fluorescent lamps are like around 40 watts or something um, you can see there's the wattage of the existing and the length that's the actual length of the light itself you know so four or five or six footers um, we'll just say six foot and uh, this is just some general information um, just so you the people you know you know what uh, is being removed um, so we'll just say these are old T8 bulbs um, and then any other special kind of notes you may want to put in there. Um, for here, there's actually you know you know five different cases here. So if there was um, it was necessary to kind of break this section up into different sections, you can. Um, a lot of times though, you won't need to. So again, we had. Um, five two-door cases, so we got ten doors, um, and on those cases, each case has um, a light on either end of the case and also one in between each door. So for um, these ten or these five cases, there is actually three lamps per case. So we will choose 15 here. Um, the left, center, and right, that's actually for the lights that you will be replacing those old ones with. So where those case cases met up and each case had its own left and right um, light bar, with the new LED lights, you will be able to replace those two lights with one single center bar because it will be able to provide light coverage to both cases. So in this instance, all those cases are in one run. Um, so you'll have one left bar, one right bar, and then in between each door, so that would be nine. So we're replacing 15 lamps with 11. Um, drivers um, most likely will not be necessary because many LEDs, and specifically the ones uh, we provide now, um, are self-ballasted and are able to just be daisy-chained together. Um, makes it the install much easier, much quicker, and uh, a lot of less, you know, wiring and stuff to run. Um, in case you do end up using lights that do need drivers, um, generally you need one driver for every two LED bars. Um, so we will leave that blank for now. Um, and again, 
all that information goes in there and you know all those other cases were blank because we only needed this one um, and so again if you need to change it click on it go into it and we're all good so I'll hit cancel um, and like the anti sweats here's your proposal page showing all basically the same kind of information existing stuff versus what's going to be put in how much it's going to cost and your payback um, and then your bill of materials the night cover tab um, we'll hit uh, new run there and um, you know this night covers are generally put on areas of like uh, produce or um, where like uh, bologna or cheese are sold um, it's the open air merchandisers um, so for this we'll just say uh, produce um, case manufacturer again not necessary but we'll put one in and let's just say it's you know 20 feet of produce so um, you may have noticed when we first came into here down at the bottom the verified feet has kind of a wrong symbol there right now um, that is a tool to just kind of help um, when determining the number of six and four footers you'll be using generally what you want to do is use as many six footers as you can um, and then fill in with four footers because uh, one it will uh, cut down on installation and two it will cut down on employee operation when the night covers are pulled down at night so in this instance we have 20 feet um, we can use up to two six footers which will get us to 12 feet so we need another eight feet so we use two four footers and now you will see that verify feet symbol went to a star meaning you're all good that all calculates out properly and uh, meshes um, cassette or OEM um, it's it the cassette version has the aluminum shroud and mounts on the front of the fascia the OEM mounts up underneath the fascia um, generally the OEMs are installed at the case manufacturers location um, and not out in the field just for the sake of you know there's lights and stuff up there and so you could run into issues with not being having a place to mount it or when you do mount it running screw into the case and then you um, cut through wires and then uh, you have to rewire the case um, so um, you know in retrofit situations uh, generally use the cassette style um, then we got cassette color white silver and black are our standard colors uh, the most common one used um, is the silver um, say a customer really wanted some other color though you choose other and you can type in the color so I just typed in red um, and tap out of it and now the cassette color says red so we can powder coat um, those aluminum shrouds to a specific color um, again but there will be a charge for that uh, since that is custom um, so just keep that in mind um, so for here we'll just choose silver the upper limit stop is a device or a uh, a piece that goes into the roller bar of the curtain that you can set it so that the curtain doesn't roll all the way up onto itself but stops you know at a determined spot so when it goes up you know you can have it hanging down a little bit so you can see the pull down handle a little bit easier um, so we'll just say no because more most often you don't need that but it, it is an option um, screen print is what it is so like say you had like uh, you know liquors liquor um, sales in the store but it was only during you know certain hours you could screen print you know like liquor is only sold between 8 and 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. or something um, so that's another option that is available um, and uh, we can be quoted on a project by project basis um, so for here we'll just say no hit save um, oh sorry and the the five foot and three foot um, at one time we did have uh, 
we were stocking those, but um, very few of those were used. So we just went back to the four and six footer. So generally won't use those. Um, so it's got all the information in there. Um, one other thing I will go through though, in the case or instance where you do have um, something that isn't four or six foot. Um, so say they had like, a, you know, just a area um, like over in the deli that was three and a half feet. Um, so length of run, you can choose, you know, just choose um, four feet. And in here, then you would just choose a four footer. Um, and uh, that will allow you to then go into um, change the uh, um, hold on something's not going right there so four feet oh because I had I chose four for the number of four footers so we just do one there so um, if you have a custom part, then when you produce your bill of materials, you can just say, you know, this one needs to be cut down to three and a half feet. But what you do is you purchase the next longest night cover for that situation. So let's say it was five and a half feet, you would buy a six footer. Um, so, you know, anything under four foot, you buy a four footer, then there's like, you know, $10 charge for cutting it down to three and a half feet, similar from cutting it down from six to five and a half. Um, so we'll just delete that one out of here. Warning, you know, you're going to remove it. Okay. <clears throat> um, so once that's done, um, again, you grow, go over and there's your proposal information and your bill of materials. Um, so then we go and do uh, ECM. For the reach-in case audit, uh, this again is for your frozen doors um, and also areas like the produce where, you know, underneath the drip pan they've got the uh, those reach-in motors. Um, so we'll do a run based on those. Um, so we'll go to frozen doors case manufacturer, um, existing model data manufacturer, um, not necessary info, but is helpful for like installers. Um, so if you can get that, um, that could be useful. Um, could also be useful if trying to, when trying to figure out like how many motors uh, per foot um, or uh, in those, you know, like the produce cases, how many motors there are. Um, so for the frozen doors, um, the length isn't totally necessary, um, but 10 doors, they're usually about two and a half feet. So we'll just say, you know, 25 feet, um, blade type, um, you may run into plastic blades once in a while. Um, if you do, it is recommended they be replaced with metal ones as plastic can become brittle and deteriorate over time. Um, or even break when you're trying to um, replace the motor. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, metal and then a motor type, uh, you know, shaded pole or permanent split capacitor. Uh, so we'll just choose shaded pole. Um, that's the more common of the older style motors. Um, and quantity. In frozen doors, there's one po motor per door. So we'll choose the 10, um, and then we'll do a new run for the produce area. And we had uh, 20 feet. Um, we'll just say metal there again, shaded pole, and common for about 
one motor per every four feet, so we'll say five there. And hit save. So now we have our two runs. The motor that you'll be using auto populates and shows you some savings there. Um, then we'll go and do the walk in audit. Um, let's say this is uh, that um, beverage cooler that we previously did with the anti sweat controls. Um, again, manufacturer, existing model, part number, not completely necessary. It's a uh, cooler. And we're going to put a fan control on it. The FC is the universal fan controller. The FCX is only for applications where the coil, the evaporator coil, is controlled by a mechanical thermostat. Voltage, either 115 or 208, 230. Um, number of coils, um, let's say there's you know two coils in there and each one has uh, four motors. Um, oh, so each one has four motors, so the total would be eight motors. The horsepower, um, 115th or 120 20th. Uh, is what you'll generally run into like in cooler walk-in coolers like that. Um, the 12 watts, that's for reach-in motors only. And the 16 watts is for the screw shaft motors that are in walk-in coolers. Um, every once in a while you'll run into those. Um, but most common ones are 115th and 120th. Um, rotation as viewed from shaft. Um, just as it sounds. So when you're looking at the motor as it's spinning, as the fan blade is spinning, when it's running, what is that rotation? If it's a little hard to tell, um, you know, you can shine a flashlight in there to see um, <coughs> the rotation and also the um, mounting bracket that it might be on. Um, otherwise, you can grab something like a, a zip tie or a straw and put it in um, in the fan blade and see which way it's getting hit and determine your rotation that way. Um, so we'll just say clockwise, um, type, um, you know, shaded pole again. The switch, um, some of the evaporator coils have a light switch on the coil to disconnect power to it. Um, so maintenance and working on it is a lot easier. Um, again, useful information for installers. Um, shaft, uh, long shaft, um, shaft is uh, 2.6 inches long and short shaft is like 1.75 um, so after you get some experience you'll be able to easily determine um, the difference between those two the screw shaft does have threads on the shaft itself whereas long and short shaft are solid on um, the screw shaft and also you know uses like a nut to keep the fan blade on the motor itself so we'll just choose long. Um, we left one speed in there just in case somebody has old inventory of single speed EC motors. Um, but 99% uh, of the time you'll choose two speed there. Um, and hit save. And puts in the information you just entered as well as kind of you know show you those savings. And again, it auto populates with the, the motor model number you need for that particular application. Um, and let's say they just happen to have just uh, like some other a freezer so we'll just call it like the main um, freezer um, and we're not going to put a fan control on this one uh, and it's a 208 230 um, it's got one coil in there with uh, two motors um, the horsepower is um, we'll say it's a 16 watt one um, so we can go through the screw shaft motors um, rotation we'll just say as viewed we'll just say as counterclockwise there mounting um, just a regular bracket shaded pole motor oops switch was yes and screw shaft motor and two speed hit save and now you scroll over 
and you'll see it auto populates with uh, the correct model number there to um, what you will be installing. Now let's just say for instance you're in this and you're putting this information in and instead of choosing 16 watt you accidentally chose 12 watt or you know something like that one of the other ones instead of 16 watt when you go to hit save it will say there is no proposed motor found so it, it gives you a warning that something in there doesn't um, uh, mesh with uh, a motor that can be used for that those particular um, data that you input so if you hit OK it literally will show you no motor so you know there's a mistake so if you go back in change this to 16 watt hit save again now you see the motors in there it will also you know do that say you had 16 watt in there correctly but you chose long shaft no proposed motor found hit cancel choose screw shaft and now it saves it properly so, so the walk-in audit is done um, the ECM proposal itself here this is for as you can see any of the display case motors and any walk-in motor that does not that is not being controlled by a fan control so in this instance that would be this second line item here um, and say this this one was being controlled by a fan control that would indicate that there's two fan controls that are needed for the bill of materials so each line item here is a fan controller um, so um, when we go over here and we've got you know all the information again um, get down in the payback and bill of materials for that proposal and then here's the ECM and fan control proposal and again all the same information um, the ECM and fan control proposal by row so um, let's just go back to the walk-in audit quick and I'll show you um, we have the first one is has a fan control the second one does not so say a customer was like well is it really gonna save me you know that much more if I do a particular walk-in or not um, um, this information so the second one didn't have a fan control in it so it's not showing up as selectable so it's only showing that first one if we go back to the walk-in audit and now choose a fan controller and just for sake we'll just say it's an FCX there's a mechanical thermostat in that particular walk-in we go back to that proposal by row and now you'll see that both of them are selectable so this way you can say like customers like well does it really make sense to do this stuff in that small freezer you can you know separate it out to show them yep here's all the stuff it's gonna save and you know it's pretty decent payback for just adding that so you know could be very well worth it um, the other thing I would like to point out in the walk-in audit is when you're doing um, a larger walk-in cooler um, just know that the evaporator coils that are in that cooler could be controlled by more than one rooftop unit so let's say this cooler itself one coil was controlled by one evaporator or one rooftop unit um, and the other one was being controlled by a totally separate rooftop unit if that is the case you have to control those with a fan controller separately you cannot control evaporator coils that are being um, supplied um, by two different rooftop units with the same fan control because they could be you know calling for refrigerant at different times and the fan controller would not operate properly so in the instance where one particular walk-in cooler or freezer has coils being controlled or have um, you know more than one rooftop unit is supplying the 
evaporator coils in there, you would actually produce two separate runs. So to illustrate that, um, for this one, say we got you know two coils with eight motors total. Well, it, each coil or coil is being control, um, sub, supplied by a different rooftop unit. You would change this to one, and this down to four, and hit save. Um, and this was our beverage. So I'll do another beverage. And it's the cooler, fan control, yep, the FC 115, it's one coil, four motors, 1 15th, clockwise, mounting, bracket, should pull, switch, yes, shaft, long, speed, two, save. Now you'll see we have two identical, um, Oh, I didn't get the bracket in there. I'll just put that in there. So they do, they are exactly the same. So now lines one and three are indicating that a fan, a singular fan control is needed for each of those. So that's producing two fan controls, if you will. So we'll go back to the ECM and fan control proposal. Um, now that we change that one freezer, you know, you'll see there's three evaporators total number total number of uh, fans is 10 and three controllers are needed. And again, that third one will now show up in this by row. Even though it's in the same walk-in cooler, it, it does separate it out so you can see the separate savings. Um, and there's your ECM fan control bill of materials. Um, once everything is done, and even prior to all of this, as soon as you start the audit, you can hit this register audit button. Um, and what that does um, is that it will now upload it to the database so it is available for your, you know, the particular login that you're using at the time. It's available on any iPad. So um, although the information is stored you know, locally on your iPad, you can now access it from any other iPad. So hit register audit, doing it for the first time, click OK to continue. Upload is complete and successful, you hit OK. And now you'll see under that customer tab, the generate proposal button is now highlighted. And this is where you go to um, you know, pull up their proposal. And before we do that, go back and I'll just show you that summary tab that, or page that we sh um, that I showed you earlier. You'll see like all the paybacks of each one, nice little summary. And then you can see like the LED lights, you know, 67 months just for that on the payback. But when you group everything together, the whole project is 26 months. So just a little bit over two years for that whole thing. Um, that's a you know pretty good payback. So um, we hit generate proposal, and depending on um, which measures you are putting in, you can you know include or not include those in this proposal. So say we didn't do the LEDs, you just take it out, and um, it will you know put everything else in the PDF that's generated, and um, you can take it from there. So we hit generate PDF. And it produces it. And here it is. It has customer, in customer information, um, your information that was, you know, that you provided when you created your account. Um, and, and just so you know, too, when you create your account, if you upload your logo right here where that Greenwise logo is, um, and uh, I believe in the header, it will replace that logo with yours. Um, so here's all the proposal pages that we looked through earlier, and then after the proposals, uh, gets down, and here's where we start with the bill. So all of the bill and materials are provided in here. And we get down, and here's the summary page. 
again showing you know 25.9 months um, and then here's a signature page in case you know your uh, customer wants to go ahead with the project you can actually sign it right there um, what you would do then is um, and even if you're not going to sign it right there but you click on the email button there and as long as you have um, Apple Mail this that's the only mail program this is compatible with is so set up Apple Mail on your iPad and it will auto populate with the customers info that you put in there um, on the customer info page you know put their email address there and obviously when you send it it'll create a copy in your sent folder and from your sent folder you can open it up um, with a you know a signature application like um, sign my pad or Adobe fill and sign um, and uh, get signatures right at the at the uh, customers um, location so you hit send and it sends the email and uh, you're done I'm just gonna hit cancel and you can delete draft or save draft there too as well um, you know, if you want to send it at a later time, you know, add some more info to your email or um, other uh, attachments, um, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, so we'll just hit cancel out of here, and you're back at the uh, main page here. Um, so that is uh, the uh, main premise of this application. Um, again, look for more information down below in the description. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll do our best to help you. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.